Hello everyone. Today let us learn from home about the Cori cycle. The Cori cycle named after its discoverer Carl Ferdinand Cori and Gertie Cori is a metabolic pathway in which lactate produced by anaerobic glycolysis in muscle is transported to the liver and converted to glucose when the, which then returns to the muscles as in cyclically metabolized back to lactate that is when needed the glycogen of the muscle is broken down into glucose and the blood carries that glucose to the muscle so it is a cycle where the glycogen in the muscle is degraded to produce the lactic acid which is moving to the blood which is moving to the liver again which is changed back to the glycogen so liver glycogen to muscle glycogen and again muscle glycogen to liver glycogen so basically what is the process of the cori cycle muscular activity requires atp we all know that which is provided by breakdown of glycogen in the skeletal muscle where where during our different kind of uh, exercise or during kind any kind of sports before that we need to do glycogen loading that means in our muscles in our liver we store this glucose as glycogen the breakdown of this glycogen when needed is known as glycogenolysis and they releases this glucose in the form of glucose 1 phosphate this glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase pg mutase glucose 6 phosphate is readily fed into glycolysis or can move into any kind of pentose phosphate pathway if the glucose 6 phosphate concentration is very high and that can provide atp to the muscle as the energy source during this muscular activity the store of the atp to the muscle uh, needs to be constantly replenished because if it is not replenished then what will happen there will be anaerobic respiration or the oxygen will be not sufficient when the supply of oxygen is sufficient the oxygen uh, the energy comes from the feeding pyruvate this is the pyruvate one product of glycolysis which is which we can see in the citric acid cycle which ultimately generate the atp through the oxygen dependent oxidative phosphorylation when oxygen supply is insufficient typically when we are doing excessive muscular activity that means suppose a person who is going to the gym so on that day particular day we will have different kinds of body ache why because our body is not accustomed to that oxygen uptake which is required for gymming our body is then will respire or our body will work as an anaerobic respiration or an, uh, our body will uh function anaerobically resulting in the formation of lactic acid which will deposit in different parts of the body or lactate will be formed which will deposit in different parts of the body causing that pain but again a day a day after another if we come continue our gymming what will happen our oxygen uptake will increase and that will help us to uh replenish the aerobic respiration replenish the dearth of oxygen and will help us to respire or help us to act uh, act or work uh, aerobically and hence that uh, pyruvate acid or pyruvic acid or pyruvate can be formed okay so when oxygen supply is insufficient typically during intense muscular activity energy is released through anaerobic metabolism lactic acid fermentation converts lac uh, lac pyruvate to lactate as we can see in the glycolysis by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme 
Most importantly, fermentation regenerates NAD plus maintaining its concentration so that additional glycolysis reaction can occur. The fermentation step oxidizes the NADH, produces the glycolysis back to NAD plus, transferring to electron from NADH to reduce the pyruvate into lactate. Instead of accumulating inside the muscle cells, lactate produced by the anaerobic is taken up by the liver. This initiates the other half of the Cori cycle. In the liver, gluconeogenesis occurs. From an intuitive perspective, gluconeogenesis reverses both glycolysis and fermentation. So then again, the glucose is then supplied to the muscle through the bloodstream and again being fed by further glycolysis reactions. So if muscle activities has stopped and the glucose is used to replenish the supply of glycolysis through glycogenesis, supplies of glycogen through glycogenesis. Okay. So overall the glycolysis steps of the cycle like over here we can see that due to in the liver the gluconeogenesis process into the Cori cycle is uh, that means the liver process is basically gluconeogenesis where the lactate is being converted to pyruvate with the help of this NAD plus and NADH is being converted to they are using 6 -phosph phosphate and they are converted to glucose that glucose is being taken up by the muscle in muscle it is the glycolysis process and they are releasing 2 phosphate so what is basically the net consumption is of 6 minus 2 4 ATP molecules. Okay. So the intensive consumption of ATP molecules in the Cori cycle shifts the metabolic burden from the muscle to the liver. Okay. That is what. So it provides a mechanism to convert the lactate produced by the anaerobic glycolysis in the muscle to the liver cell. So just the muscle glycogen to liver, liver glycogen to muscle. So glucose converts the pyruvate to lactate by the lactate dehydrogenase. Again, the lactate is being transferred. Two lactate is there. This two lactate is being transferred through the blood to the liver. Liver again, sorry, in liver, the lactate is being converted to pyruvate again to glucose. So here the 6-phosphate is being used as a whole and 2-phosphate is being released. So a consumption of 4-phosphate or 4 ATP, sorry, not phosphate, 4 ATP is being used. Okay, I hope you have understand. This is a short cycle, but a long explanation is there that why Cori cycle takes place and why the Cori cycle is initiated in our body. I hope you have understood. Thank you.